<laughs> all right, well, we know it's all the rage these days, right? Working from home is seen as sort of the great equalizer, driven now by the greater working power of workers, right? They've got a lot more bargaining power. But what are the ultimate costs of this, right? Think about this. It's estimated that Manhattan alone loses $12 billion a year because of people working remotely. And lately, there are signs that productivity is really beginning to wane. Yesterday, ADP put out their employment numbers for the month. And this is something that's starting to happen a whole lot more. Small businesses cannot compete. 60,000 jobs lost in small businesses, in part because they can't pay the higher fees and they, they can't afford to have people working from home. So this new paradigm shift, it comes at a cost. And maybe, just maybe, it won't even be for a long time. Although my next guest says the die is cast, folks, and there's no turning back. Joining me now, Bianco Research President Jim Bianco. And Jim, I'll let you know up front, my man, I dig you a lot, but I'm still not convinced. I'm still not convinced. Why are you so convinced that this is it, we won't go back? Well, I think, you know, to answer that question, when you take it, first of all, let's be clear, only about half the jobs in America can be done remotely. The other half, you have to go into some place of employment to do. But for those half to be done remotely, we usually pay people on proficiency. How well do you do your job? We don't pay them on collaboration. How nice a person are you in the office, around the water cooler, or in the meeting? So since we pay people on proficiency, if you can get it done remotely, you've accomplished the basic task of that job. So I speak to a lot of CEOs, right, small businesses, large businesses, and they are concerned, though, about the human element, the, the collaboration. They say you just can't get certain things in a Zoom call. I mean, I saw somewhere recently where half the people on Zoom calls don't even have the video up. They're saying it's the, it's just a disconnect. What do you say about that? Well, that is, the, that is the issue about work from home. You are more efficient and you are more productive if your job is to answer emails, write reports, update spreadsheets, or do any of the other things that you would do in a work from home job. But the collaboration part does suffer. So the question you have to ask the boss is, do you want the report done quickly? Or do you want people to sit around a room and, and collaborate with each other? If you want it done quickly, leave them at home. If you want them to sit around and talk with each other, bring them into the office. So it's not an either or thing. The, there is advantages to getting together. Right. And there are advantages to being remote. Right. And right now, like I said before, we pay people to do reports. We pay people to answer emails. And that's why it seems to, that that's got the upper hand right now. All right. Uh, the, the audience has strong opinions on this. So let's go to Paul and Mary, uh, uh, Paul from Maryland, rather. Uh, next guest uh, question. And Paul, uh, what's your question? So thank you, Mr. Bain. So from in Maryland, the legislature this session has considered a bill to offer tax incentive to businesses to reduce the work week from, four, from five days to four days, the work hours from 40 hours to 32, at no reduction in pay. So how would that, if something right. like that, affect the economy? So, so Jim, I got to tell you, a long time ago, I thought maybe the four-day work week would work, but you got to still put at least 40 hours in. Uh, I know in the U.K., 96 percent of people out there said they want a four-day work week. Maybe it becomes a reality, but what are the economics of it? Oh, the economics of that are, are all like backwards. Basically, you're, you're raising the cost of home, having an employee. If I'm going to have to work 32 hours as opposed to 40 hours, I'm going to have to hire more people to get the same amount of work done, which means you've made it more expensive. Now, the thing about remote work, just to kind of tie it in with that, is it's going to be next to impossible to try and measure a job in terms of hours because what's happening with remote work is we're measuring it in terms of tasks. Yeah. I need you to do X, Y, and Z. If it takes you 15 minutes or 10 hours to do it, that's up to you. So how do you measure that in a four-day versus five-day work week? But in general, you're just raising the cost of employment, and that's not exactly what we want to do right now. Yeah, I'm surprised Marilyn would be thinking of something like that. Let's go to Jessica C. from New York. Jessica. Hi, how are you? Um, so I've been seeing a lot about the income subsidies and that coupled with the AI technology that the advancements that are going on. I'm wondering what can be done uh, for the future of the job force to keep um, social advancement like a possibility for lower and middle class? So, Jim, you know, this is a, a big part of today's show. We got uh, Machio uh, Kaku coming up soon, uh, uh, the, the, you know, famed sci scientist and futurist. AI, the opportunities, and where are they going to, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of people are going to lose out as AI and robots take over. How do you see that integrating into the workforce? 
Yeah, I'm going to push back on that about people losing out. Yes, AI does eliminate or technology does eliminate some jobs, but it makes the jobs higher end. When the spreadsheet was invented, we eliminated an entire class of workers called accounts clerks or accounting clerks. But we created financial managers that used the spreadsheet for higher end kind of stuff. We actually created more financial managers. When we created the ATM, we actually created more tellers because they were doing more important or higher end work than we eliminated. So what will happen with AI is it will eliminate a lot of low end jobs, but it will push us all up the scale and it usually creates more jobs than not. I'm a big believer that technology is a net creator of jobs, but I will warn that won't be that won't be right. smooth. You know, you right. might see the job loss first and then right. the job creation that it would create later. I, you know, listen, I'm a natural Luddite. I'll be honest about that. And I do know the first three industrial revolutions, net, net, we got jobs. I, I love you, Jim. You're brilliant. I hope you're right. But I'm a little nervous. That's all I'm telling you. Thanks a lot, buddy. All right, coming up. Thank you. Dusting off some uh, jobs that you may have thought were relics of the past, plus our expert panel, Joni Bailey's with us, Tom Gimbel. We're going to answer a whole lot more of the audience's questions. This amazing audience right after this. Thank you.